So you have a split grade and you have to teach them math. How exactly do you go about teaching two grades in your math class at the same time? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk all about how to approach teaching mathematics to your split grade classroom, whether you're teaching grades three, grade four, grade five, grade six, or any other grade in between. When you have a split grade, here are my suggestions and strategies for how you can tackle teaching a split grade without constantly needing to feel like you're really doing two jobs at once. My name is Patty and I'm a teacher here in Ontario, Canada, and I am also a split grade teacher. And every week I have a brand new episode of Teaching with Madly Learning where we talk all about teaching and learning in the junior grades. So let's dig in and talk about teaching math to your split. So the first thing that we really need to get through and the very first and most important thing when it comes to teaching math is to teach them together. Now, I am a big proponent that just because you have a split grade does not mean that you're doing the job of two different people, that you're teaching two different, separate, completely distinct groups of children. You're teaching one class and just happens to be that you have some students in five and some students in six or so on, whatever your split may be. For me, I like to approach teaching a split grade as really looking at having one class and having just a wider range of abilities and things that I need to kind of go in between. So in math, we span from the grade five all the way up until the grade six. Now in math, there's a continuum. So I know that there's going to be some of my sixes that will need to be retaught content from the five. There may be even some of my fives that need to have content taught from the previous grade. And I really want to look at teaching math on that continuum. I like to use the analogy of a train. I know I've used this plenty of times before in other videos that you may have watched, is really thinking about learning like a train. And as your train is going up the track, you're going to pick up students where they are. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what color their backpack is or what grade they happen to be in, that you're going to meet them where they are and you're going to give them the tools that they need. And when they hit the end of what it is they're supposed to be learning for that grade, you simply open the doors and let them off, but the train keeps moving. And that's really how I like to teach and approach teaching math to a split grade. I am not going to teach two separate lessons to the group and try to juggle between the content. There is a lot of overlap and it's structured in the, here at least in the Ontario curriculum as a continuum. So while there are some concepts that are taught in one grade that just do not exist in the other, for the most part, you can fit them together. So when we designed our Ignited Math program, this is exactly how we approached it first. The very first thing that we did was we looked at the curriculum and we looked at the curriculum as they've presented it on a continuum where we can see grade four compared to grade five, grade five compared to grade six and so on. And we looked for commonalities. Now we approach math as a spiraled approach to mathematics. So we want students to be looking at big concepts and big ideas and look and investigate a few curriculum strands together as they fit together and work together to sort of explore a concept or a big idea. So when we're looking at planning the grade five and the grade six, when you have lessons where it's the same type of activity that can be completed, but say the expectations are different or the scope may be different. So one of the best examples of this is when we look at things like place value. Now a student in grade four needs to learn four digit numbers. A student in grade five is learning up to five digit numbers. A student in grade six learns six digit numbers all the way up to a million, but pretty much only six digit numbers. So when you think about concepts like that, you have to look at whether or not I can teach the same lesson and the same concept and the same strategy and can it be applied to both grades? So I'm not just going to teach the grade fives just about five digit numbers and then turn around and teach the grade sixes about a grade six digit number. I'm going to teach students about numbers and the place value system. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Instead of focusing on the number of digits and the lesson is just going to be about that digits, I'm going to back up and I'm going to really look at the concept that's being covered and what lesson can I cover to teach the place value house concept. So I'm going to talk to them about the houses and how they have last names. And we're going to look at what happens when you have the tens 
and you have the hundreds and you have the thousands and then you have the ten thousands and then you have the hundred thousands. Well, I can expose my fives all the way up to those six digit numbers. I'm not expecting them to use those six digit numbers in their practice, but we're still going to talk about it and they're going to be present for those conversations in the same way that my sixes will be present for the five conversation where we're really discussing five digit numbers. And one of my favorite things to do in the classroom is I can very easily put up a six digit number and simply train my fives to know this is the six digit number. And that six digit is just not for the fives. So they can do the exact same question if I do a number of the day type of question or I do a word problem. I can put a number inside that word problem that has students looking at it. And my fives know just cross out that six digit and work with the question with only the five digits present, whereas my fives or my sixes will work with the whole number. It's a really simple and easy way to differentiate what task you're doing, even though it's exact same task. In fact, it's even the exact same page that you could photocopy because you just need to get the fives to scratch out the six digit number. But it also gives you a chance to also scratch out the six and the fifth digit number to differentiate for those kids that need to only work with four digit numbers or three digit numbers, or it lets your students pick which digit they want to eliminate and still use it that way, or challenge themselves and use all of the digits that are present. There's an easy way for you to still be able to do the same activity, the same lesson, and just vary the numbers change up those numbers. You can teach the concept of finding area of a geometric shape. And for the fours and the fives, you can look at quadrilaterals and the sixes, you can look at triangles and parallelograms and trapezoids. You can just have your students investigate different shapes, but the concept that you're teaching is area. And that concept applies to whether or not you're talking about rectangles or triangles or parallelograms or trapezoids, the same concept is there. But what you're looking at, what students are practicing is they're practicing the concept of calculating area for different shapes. And when you approach it this way, you have the same lesson, but the task, the output that students do is a variation of the lesson. Then you can teach one lesson, but yet students can do multiple tasks. Now, we did this in Ignited Math as we actually designed all three levels of our Ignited Math program to work together. So we sat down and looked at all of the curriculum expectations that span from grade three to grade six and looked at where the commonalities were and looked at where the crossover expectations overlapped. And then we planned lessons that we could use in multiple grade levels so that we could use the same concept in a grade four lesson that we used in a grade five lesson, but the numbers or the details or the specific numbers and specific questions that students may be asked may be slightly different. Or there may be a slightly increase in complexity for the grade five versus the grade four, but the same concept in lesson can both be taught and used so much so that I could give one set of instructions, but two sheets of paper to my fives, get one version and my sixes get another version. Yet my instructions for the activity remain exactly the same. The only thing that is different is the slight variation for what the fives or the sixes are doing based on the instructions or the concepts that they're being covered. Now, this is one of the features for our netted math program that makes it truly special is because it allows us to look at the split grade teacher and say, okay, I'm looking at the lesson for grade five and I'm looking at the lesson for grade six and I'm not going to teach those two things separately. I'm going to teach them together. Which lesson am I going to start with and which lesson am I going to end with? Which activities am I going to get my students to do and have them prepped and ready to go? But because they were designed together, they were designed specifically to work together you can use two different grade level packages and do the same thing and just mesh them together because they're already very similar and that that's already done for you. It also allows you as the teacher, because you're seeing both different programs, you're seeing the same activity at two different grade levels. It also allows you to see where those differences are between the grades. So you know where on that 
train on that continuum train, you know, we're going to let students on and let students off because you very clearly can see how students are going to be dealing with things differently based on what grade they're in. Now, another aspect of teaching split grades is using centers and using guided instruction. Now, this is going to be a really important feature for a split grade classroom because guided instruction will allow the teacher to tailor specific lessons to small groups of students. So you can do a whole group lesson on a concept, but when you do need to get specific and teach students specific skills, you can do that during a guided math session. This will give you an opportunity to differentiate for your students, give one mini lesson to your fives who are really struggling that may need concepts from previous grades retaught and reinforced before they're ready to tackle their grade level content. And it also allows you to take the content of your higher grade and really dig in and push those students to dig a little bit further and go a little bit deeper. So when you pair guided instruction that is specific and individualized to the groups of students and the abilities in your classroom, and then you use holistic whole group lessons that incorporate both grades concepts and teach those concepts and skills. And then in between allowing students to do your daily warmups and your practice pages and building in some time for reflection and inquiry, that's where you can really structure and plan your guided math sessions, your whole group lessons to really fit the needs of your split grade learners just as easily as you can for your straight grade. The only additional workload that would be for the teacher would be looking at the two very similar grade level content and picking and choosing the trajectory of which lesson you're going to go with and what your students need the most. Do they need a little bit more reteaching? Do you need to send your fives off and do a little bit extra guided instruction with your group of sixes to push them a little bit further or give them some more advanced training and knowledge? That can all be done when you have a structure and a format already in place that allows you to do a whole group lesson to everybody in your class and then do small group tailored lessons that will help to push and tweak and meet your students where they are. Overall, when you have a split, it's really important to be able to find as many opportunities as you can to teach them together. Math is one of those opportunities. Teaching your students in mathematics together is going to save you a ton of time it's going to make you feel a lot less overwhelmed when you're comparing those two different grade levels. Using differentiated math centers will allow you to target and tailor specific concepts and ideas to your students without it always feeling like you're flipping back and forth between one grade or the other. Having a structure and a routine in place that allows for guided math to happen because you've got riveting centers happening in your classroom will allow you to facilitate more of that learning. It also means as a split grade teacher, you need to take a step back from the specific skills that we are needing to teach and really look at conceptually what students are learning and more broadly across the grades. What is the big idea that's being taught? And look at that big idea. That big idea will form the concepts of the lessons that you are teaching versus the activities your students are doing will get more specific and granular as to the specific skills they need at each grade. Yet your teaching can be a little bit more general, not general that you're not covering the content, but it can be more general and you have a backup and focus on the concept and not necessarily focusing just on the skills set and really narrow. And remember, teaching math to your split grade is really a train. It's a train of differentiation. And you're going to pick up students along the way and you simply just let them off when their time comes because that's the grade they're in and you keep going with those who can. So I hope that's giving you a bit of an insight as to how you can teach your split grade classroom mathematics successfully without having to increase your workload twice as much as you would if you were teaching a straight grade.